this is your seat at the table and welcome to all things battle tech it's a beautiful saturday morning out there the weather's actually pretty nice it's in the 70s right now uh must be light way until later i think tomorrow night's supposed to warm up monday and tuesday supposed to get warm anyway we're looking at the periphery this is the original installment from fasa i have done a lot of other videos in, on on various periphery states and this was one of the three key books i used to get information on them from uh, so i'm not going to go into great detail on it we're just going to take a gander at the book itself and uh you know i don't remember obviously the tag that, for what it I paid for it was uh, not there and you can see some of the early early wonderful art that FASA had available to it don't knock it if you've ever tried to create something uh, for internet production and uh, for for a novel perspective or game material and trying to get artwork that doesn't going to cost you an arm or leg if they had resources to pay for some good artwork they got what they could get or they could get what they could find because there's not every it's not until you start developing a pro, uh, something that people start to come out of the woodwork and uh, that have talents nowadays is completely different so anyway this was produced for in 1988 uh, it was published by the FASA Corporation in Chicago, Illinois. And so we got table of contents, blah, blah, blah. And I want to say I paid 15, $10 or $15 for this. You know, so sometimes you can find a price and sometimes you can't. I don't know. This would have been around in the $15 range at the time, which I guess would be $45 today by today's standards. Is I, I don't know, I guess what it is. Get our introduction, their, their Piranha Principle, Terror Alliance, Death for Premier, Premier, First Exodus, you know, Outer Reaches Rebellion, Beyond the Farthest Star, Birth of the Rim World's Republic, Calderon Expansion, The Turning of Concordat, Davian and Calderon, the Rim from Rim to Tamar, First Amorous. Big and Neglect, Struggling with Leal, The Age of War, Expanding the Frontiers, The Outworlds of Lions, The Star League Era, Rebellion in the Rim, The Santiago Massacre, Reunification War, Concordat War, Case Amber, Debacle, New Commander, Treating the Nebula, War for the Outworlds Alliance, Pit Kern Legions, Strategy of Savagery, Man the Campaign Against the Magistry. Boy, the Magistry back then and the current version of the Magistry is very radically different from the way it was back in the early, before the Star League and during the early Star League. Just, just saying. There's still a lot of significant connections and stuff to the way it is now. But there's some there, the differences are quite noticeable, in my opinion. Conquest of the Rim Worlds Republic, Operation Mailed Fist, territorial statuses, the Good Neighbor Policy, Turing Bootstraps, Avalar Econom Econ Economics, Amorous Politics, Years of Detente, Canopus in the mid-century, educational reforms, Canopian triplets, the crucial year, wheels within wheels, dark clouds, winter discontent, star league propaganda, the seduction of Richard Cameron, faithful servant, the amorous crisis, the small paradox, the beginnings of Comstar, desperate measures, no place for a pacifist, Kerensky's Anibus, Said it was never clear to any of us why Krinsky course he did. The astrographic course was not his course of action as we all understood that. We never understood why he gathered his troops in New Snackerad rather than Terra where the final battle had been fought. When he jumped from the Darien system we naturally assumed he was on his way to confer with the Cretan authorities. He might have, have been attempting to lay plans for a new government with Marunu Kurita, or perhaps he was concerned about the transition from, of the Darien government from an now defunct Terran hegemony to the Cretan rule. 
After he left Nerean's system without stopping planets, I ever assumed it speculation about conferences with Miro Carita must be correct, as the general's next stop was Styx. The speculation ended when he jumped from Styx to uh, Deneb Algeti rather than to Telos, the usual course towards Luthien. We lost track of his ships after that and had to admit that we had no idea where he was up to. We all now know what happened after the jump from New Smackerad went to the periphery and the silence ever since. I suppose it can be said we still don't know why. Still an odd sideline, a sidelight to the whole business, though. In the backwaters of a world con, uh, called An uh, Antonopolis, there was a dropship cult, one whose religion is set up by primitive tribes that worship some advanced technological development from a more sophisticated culture. Anthropologists have found that the tenets of this religion follow the usual course, the miraculous visitors from the sky, their magical powers, the promise, either explicit or inferred to return, but the uh, anthropologists discovered nothing else as well, or something else as well. More than 800 kilometers from the nearest permanent structure, the natives of Annapolis tribe had constructed a six meter high statue of General Alexander Kerensky as a perfect likeness carved in solid granite, a type of stone that does not appear to, in nature on Annapolis. From a Broken Phoenix Egg by John Pierre Sorcier, aid to John Davion, Porthos Press, 202812. Right? All right. So, the Succession Wars, Divide and Conquer. Here's here's the crayon, the sh shoes. This was one that always, an example of the utter failure of the, of the Star League's concept mindset for economics, especially for the periphery. The independent world of Comstock, now part of the American hegemony, was one of those that Star League sought to dominate by dis disintegra disintegrating the economy. Though the planet had an arable land, the Star League built enough factories and offered good paying jobs to work them while promising that nearby agrarian worlds would supply food to Comstock and return for their, sh return for their shoes. The leather for the Comstock shoe factories would be supplied by off world Star League ranches. Machinery and replacement parts would also come from off world. People at Comstock were able to concentrate entirely on producing shoes for the people of other worlds, and as long as the Star League functioned, so did this system. When the Amherst Civil War began, Comstock was cut off. Its people quickly fell into a subsistent level of existence. Because no one at Comstock had farmed the land for generations, they had none of the agricultural ex expertise needed to produce enough food to support a burgeoning population. When the Marion exploration vessels landed on uh, Comstock 20 years later, they find, found widespread famine, disease, and malnutrition. They also found that the factories had continued to operate. The supply letter from a nearby Francis had continued along with shipments of fresh meat, for the leaders of Comstock believed that the planet would one day rejoin another megalithic economic structure like the Star League, and the people would again buy the goods from their factories. All over the inhabited areas of Comstock were thousands of warehouses filled with the shoes of all sizes, styles, and descriptions. Many of these warehouses are still standing. Some have not yet been emptied of their contents. From the development of the Marian Hegemony by Professor Frederick T. Bone, University of Luxon Press, 3028. So there's an example. This is an example of a world that damned or dies because it's, it's set up to be totally dependent on a intergalactic trade or inter you know, So they got... Food coming from one set of worlds and resources coming from another and parts and mechanical uh, expertise coming from a third, all being transported by a fourth pro, uh, you know, interstellar logistic system. And that all craps out and suddenly they're in a big problem because they're so specialized. They're so dependent on this larger picture that they're unable to function without it. And they're almost completely wiped out because of it. If it wasn't, you know, another 20 years had passed or 100 years had passed, there have been probably very few people living on that planet. I'm just saying. Just an example, right? So we got Died and Conquer. The First Succession War in the Periphery. Bandit Kingdoms. The Second Succession War. The ta Tactical Developments. Conquest of Cerno uh, Cer Cercanus. Uh, Agnostus Calderon. Third Succession War, Resistance and Philosophy, Conclusion. Then we get into the various the powers, Terry and Concordat, and I've already done videos on these, so I'm not going to delve into them. Magistry of Canopus. Go see those videos. I highly recommend them. There's some are, there's some are better than others, but the, a couple of them are pretty popular. It is what it is. All right. Outworlds Alliance. This is all circa 3025.
right? And then we got in the prayer for independence. If you want to get an idea where some of you know Marian hegemony and others got to start and how the earth, how they were operating in 3025, this is this is where you go if you can get your hands on a copy of it. You know, the downside, of course, is the era is we didn't create PDFs back then. They didn't think they needed to, or it was not something that was actually a thing. And so now a lot of this old material is gone and keep in mind this is something we, we don't we don't take into account I don't think is that the publishing industry uh, for game material in the day even today uh, there's a there's a comment on a catalyst one of the catalyst uh, website pages talking about uh, looking at reintroducing or doing a current run on an old some older systems and they only create 25,000 units so 25,000 box sets of the armored game combat system or whichever whichever one they were focusing on a number of others so once they're gone they're gone now they have the ability to anything that they've created in the last 15 years or so or specifically catalyst and everything they've created they have digital content all, all this stuff so they could reproduce it and produce it in a physical format part of the problems i think is why so many books are, are only pdf only is in part because they don't have the resources and the population or the game supply and demand to justify having hardcore books produced on a regular basis. So if you go back to books like this, let's just say this one is an example. Perhaps when FASA put this out, they produced 15,000 copies or 20,000 copies. They make one, one print. And if they didn't sell that entire print out in, in, a, in a short order, and I mean within months of it being put out uh, on the market, then they would never have gone back and reprinted another printing of it. Now, it's possible that they that if they sold enough and there was still a demand for them, they would then redo a second run on them. But for a lot of game systems, they think my only number in the tens of thousands when you look at the sheer number of people out there, there's a reason why there's only so many of these copies available and why they're so rare. And, of course, a lot of people do. Well, I played that game for uh, five years and then I got tired of it, so I just threw it away. I just chucked it in the trash. Or they just fall apart. They get damaged. Uh, you get disgusted with them and they get tossed into a room and, uh, in, in piss poor condition. Uh, eventually they deteriorate to the point where they're, they're not salvageable. You have an accident and you spill something on them and you can wreck it. You know, I take experience. Experience has taught me a lot of stuff. In case you haven't caught on to the backdrop I'm using right now, you know, this is a part of the the book that came out of Empire Rising, or the map that comes out of Empire Rising. It is a vastly different type of map from um, past maps and stuff. Uh, this is definitely a poster for the wall, you know, if you wanted to put it up there, but it's on both sides. So it's kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't. It's more about a information and curiosity thing than it is actually. It's not very functional in my personal opinion but it's, it looks good on the back so you know that's what that's why I got it down here you know got it down here so we can share it a little bit but um, once again though from experience I was sitting here and I got myself some lemonade today and my cup's sweating a little bit so this is what I got sitting over here so we'll put this down. I'm going to put that here because this is sitting on my table. So the odds of me knocking this, accidentally bumping it, or more or worse, one of the cats jumping up here because you know, right over here on behind my left, taking a nap up here in the uh, pile of stuff behind me is is uh, Frankie, the shelter cat. My uh, wife has a chair there by the window and it's stacked about see four feet high with. Uh, plastic boxes and totes of her stuff covered in blankets and the cats like to snap on it so anyway that's just what it is tell the next time this is rick and i hope you guys have a great weekend